Number 25. Calculate the speed of a spherical raindrop would achieve falling from 5 kilometers. Letter A, in the absence of air drag. So let's just do that first. So here I have a little picture. Here's the raindrop. Here's how far it has to fall. I already realized a problem. It's in kilometers. I need it in meters. So just move the decimal three places to the right. So it'd be simply 5,000 meters. Okay. Now recall that the uh, raindrop is starting with an initial velocity of zero, right? It has to start somewhere. So starting at zero. And it's eventually going to fall all the way down here, right? And that's going to have a certain velocity. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the final velocity. And essentially this raindrop is in free fall, correct? So we also know that the acceleration of this raindrop is that due to gravity of negative 9.80 meters per second squared. So now uh, this is our y value, right? This is the displacement. So we need to think of a formula that relates these three variables, initial velocity, acceleration, final velocity, and displacement. So go back to chapter three and we think about this formula, right? The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by y. And I'm considering all my y components here, so therefore they all have to be in the y direction. So I'm looking for the final velocity, uh, so that is my variable. The initial was zero, so that just goes to zero. The acceleration of the y was negative 9.80, and the displacement is negative 5,000. Right? If you don't put it in as negative, this whole term will come out to be negative. When you take the square root, you will get an undefined answer. Um, but it's not a big deal. So in any case now, let's just now calculate the uh, results. So we got 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 5,000. And what do we get here? We get 98,000, right? 98,000. Okay. And now let's square root the two sides. Remember, when we square root the two sides, we do get a plus and minus answer. Technically, if we're asked for the velocity, the velocity is going to be negative because it's traveling down, right? I mean, that would make sense given the context of the problem. Um, so square root of 98,000, we get a value of 313. So 313 meters per second, all right? And like I said, the answer probably should be uh, negative <clears throat> if we got to consider direction, but it really didn't tell us up or down, whatever. If you put in the negative sign here, that'd be great. If you don't, I'm sure it probably will not be marked wrong. In any case, uh, that's the value, okay? So now, uh, let's see, let's go to letter B. So letter B, it says with, now we have to do this all with air drag. Okay, so when we do do it with air drag, we have to take, it says take the size uh, across Take the size across of the drop to be, okay, four, four millimeters and the density of, uh, and the density to be uh, this value <clears throat> and the surface area to be this. Okay. All right. So now, um, so now where do we take it from here? All right. So what we now need to do is um, I need to now be considering this drag formula right on the right hand side. So. Why don't we just write this formula down? Let's define the terms. So we have the force, the drag force is equal to one half of the coefficient of drag multiplied by uh, the density in which the object is falling in times the surface area of that object falling, right? Specifically how it's facing. And then we also need to know uh, the velocity. All right, squared. So now in order to calculate, well, let me think. Probably the best thing to do here would be to calculate the terminal velocity, all right? And we'll see, um, I wanna see if it reaches terminal velocity or not. And the only way to really tell that is to calculate for it. All right, now remember, in order to calculate for terminal velocity, uh, let me just set up a force diagram here, a free body diagram. This you know, point in the middle represents the raindrop, okay? And that raindrop has a certain weight to it that gravity's pulling. So that weight is equal to mg. Right now, what is the mass of the raindrop? And you look back and you say, oh gosh darn it, they didn't tell us. Well, they told us a couple of things <laughs> that we can use to calculate it, all right? They said it's spherical, so let's start there. So we got a upper left-hand corner, guys. So we got a sphere, okay? And they told us that the, take the size across of the drop to be four millimeters. What that means is across this entire drop, all right, it's four millimeters. So this is four mm. Okay, so that sounds great. Now, that this is of a sphere, right? So how do I now calculate um, the mass? Well, I do know the density, okay? 
Remember that density, right, is equal to mass over volume. And what they basically gave us, actually, uh, yeah, no, I do need to because they gave us the millimeters, yeah. So that's in terms of uh, a distance. So what we need to do here is uh, we need to solve for the volume of the sphere, okay, in order, in order to calculate this properly. All right, so now what we need to do is think about, well, how, what is the, what is the formula for volume, right, volume of a sphere? So do you guys remember that? Well, the volume is going to be four-thirds. Here it is. So volume is equal to four-thirds, four-thirds, right, pi r cubed, okay, pi r cubed. So I need to know the radius, but they gave me essentially the diameter. No big deal, okay? We can just find the radius by dividing it by two, right? So it should be two millimeters. But the problem is, you know, these are in millimeters. Everything else is in meters. So let's take two millimeters, and convert that into uh, meters. Remember the millimeters on the bottom, meters on the top, there's a thousand, a thousand millimeters in one meter. So essentially the meter would be equal to 0 0.002, okay? So when I now calculate this, I get, I get velocity is equal to four thirds pi, pi times 0 0.002 cubed, okay? So the volume of this raindrop is going to be 4 over 3 times pi times 0 0.002 squared. Uh, not squared, it's cubed. Silly goose. So 4 divided by 3 times pi times 0 0.002 cubed. And that comes out to be 3.35. So 3.35 times 10 raised to the negative 8. Okay, and this is now is in meters cubed. So now I have my volume. All right, so now I can finally go back to this formula to find the mass. So now the density they told me is this value. So it's one times 10 to the third. That will equal then the mass divided by now 3.35 times 10 to the negative eight. So just simply cross multiply here and we will be able to find the mass. So take 3.35 times 10 to the minus eight multiply by one times 10, to excuse me, one times 10 to the third. So we get 3.35 times 10 to the minus five, and that is in kilograms. Okay, so this is now the mass. So now go back to our diagram here. Now I found the mass of the raindrop, right? So that's 3.35 times 10 to the minus, times 10 to the minus five, now multiply that by 9.80. And that will be now the weight. So take that value, multiply by 9.8, and 3.28, we'll get 3.28 times 10 to the minus 4 now. Okay, so this is the weight. Now remember, when it reaches terminal velocity, that means that there is no acceleration. So acceleration in this problem is equal to zero. What does that mean? That means the sum of the forces will equal zero, and they must be balanced. So therefore, there must be an opposing force here. I'm going to call it the drag force because that's what it is. And it must equal the weight, it just points in the opposite direction. So this value is going to be 3.28 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, wonderful. Now I found my drag force. So let's plug that in. All right, so we get 3, 3.28 times 10 to the minus 4th is equal to now 1 half times the coefficient of drag. So we have to, they're talking about a, about a spherical raindrop, right? So we got to go to the table, find the sphere. Here it is, 0 0.45. So let's plug that in, 0 0.45 times then the density. Well, the density of what? Well, what is it traveling through, right? It's not the density of the raindrop itself. It's the density of the fluid that the object is traveling in. It's traveling in air. And we have to remember that the density of air is equal to one point. 21 times, well, not times, 1.21 kilogram per uh, cubic meter, okay? Okay, so now uh, that takes care of that. So we have here, we have, uh, so we have 1.21, okay? And then the area, right? So now it tells us the surface area, right, of the sphere, they do give that to us. So they tell us that the surface area of the sphere is pi r squared. So that's going to be the f the face that is facing the air, right? 
So I have area is equal to pi r squared. Now remember, I have to use the meter value here that I found before, 0 0.002, and that's going to be squared. All right, so the area here now is going to be pi times 0 0.002 squared. So 1.2... 1.26, so we have 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, great. So let's plug that in. So I'm going to trail up here a little bit because I'm just running out of space. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me just take this thing. One second, guys. I'm going to just bring it down here to the bottom, okay? So now let me plug in that value. So 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5. Ah, so much more room, right? Times the terminal velocity squared. Let's clean it up. So we got 3.28 times 10 to the minus 4. Condense all the numbers on the right-hand side here. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.45 times 1.21 times 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5. And we get a value of 3.43 times 10 to the minus 6. That's then multiplied by the terminal velocity squared. So now divide this value out of both sides. Okay, so I'm just running out of room, so let me put now the terminal velocity squared will equal, so 3.23, excuse me, 3.28 times 10 to the minus 4, divided by 3.43 times 10 to the minus 6, and we get a value of 95, so 95.6, and then we got to take the square root of both sides. So the terminal velocity of this raindrop will be 9.78, 9.78 meters per second. This is the terminal velocity. All right, this is why, right? Nine point. It's only it's only the the you know the speed of gravity. Or not the speed of gravity, but it's equal to the acceleration due to gravity. But it's not a terribly fast speed. That's why when you get hit with a raindrop, you don't get knocked out. All right? Otherwise, if it falls a lot faster, everybody would be uh, conking out on the sidewalk during a rainstorm. So uh, now, how does this help me solve the problem? Well, it says calculate this would achieve. Okay, so that's actually the question going back to it. Uh, it's not going to achieve a speed faster than 9.78 meters per second. And we can kind of see the big difference, right? If we don't assume air resistance, here the, here the velocity of the raindrop is 313 uh, meters per second, which, what does that even work out? That's almost like 1,000 kilometers per hour. You, you, can, you can say good night. I mean, nobody's going out in a rainstorm then, all right? But uh, so fortunately, that's not the case. So considering air drag, the result in reality is much different. All right, and I hope that makes sense and comes through in this problem. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please, please remember to subscribe. That would help us out tremendously. Thank you very much.